had a signal that was about five feet in length along here, above the end of that hole straight down here. And then I dug it out to see what it was and it just came deeper and deeper and deeper. And there's like a stone slap down there. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland Welcome to Dirty Secrets of Scotland. We're here in the field, Jack Spaniels, Sarah and I, and we're going metal detecting for treasures. This is a field that I've found Roman finds in before, so fingers crossed for some amazing finds. Let's yeah. get detecting. It's also my third time detecting. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Let's, Let's get, get dirty. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Willie has a signal already, apparently. Yeah, I've got an 18 signal. Which I've never lost. There we go. Must be a small target. Okay, it's here. It would be under the tractor track, wouldn't it, Jack? Which means it's much harder to dig because it's been compacted by the tractor. Alright, come Where's on. Where's it going to be? It's the hole. It's this, whatever this is. It's an off cut of something, perhaps. It looks like greenish, greenish patina. Yeah, it is. Patina. It means it's a copper alloy. It looks like it was actually some sort of trade weight that's been cut in half. Anyway, yeah, first find. There you go, first one down. Well, apparently I've got a belter of a signal. Yep, you do. So. She's gonna dig it out, folks. Is it a dirty secret of Scotland? Is it a beer can? Is it a ring pool? Is it a matchbox toy car? Don't make me laugh! <laughs> is it a hoard? Is it a Viking helmet? Iron brew. Iron brew. It's classic. Made Scottish in Scotland culture. from girders. Oh well. Got something around here in this clod of stuff. Ah, what's this? I think it's just a piece of copper plate. I don't think it's anything interesting. Just a bit of utilitarian copper plate, I think. Might have some writing on it though when I get it home, but I doubt it. Anyway, let's keep looking. Okay, so I was wrong about that. It isn't a piece of utilitarian copper plate. It is, in fact, a theatre token. It has stamped into the metal the theatre's name, the Prince of Wales, and the fleur de lis is below that. It also says the word pit, meaning pit area of the theatre. I found another example from the same theatre that says upper boxes. I did a feature on these tokens before, so I won't go into loads of detail, but it's nice to see them coming out the ground again, and I'm very glad that it wasn't just a piece of scrap metal. Dug something out the hole already. It's in this clod here. Oh, it's this. Whatever this is. Ah! This is an old thimble. An old copper alloy thimble. So that is not bad at all, eh, Jack? And Jack has got his ball in the hole, as usual. And it's back in the hole. <laughs> nice! Let's keep looking. signal in here. It sounds huge. Ah, I think that that's a coin. Sarah's desperate to find a coin. She hasn't found one yet. Um, this is a coin but there's not much to see on it. It's a plain disc. Probably a Georgian coin. I'd say 1700s, mid 1700s there about. But it doesn't say anything. It's all been eaten away by the ground. It's a shame. If it was silver or gold, it would look like it had just been lost yesterday, but it's not, so that's just the way it is. Let's keep looking. Willie's all the way over there, so I thought I would film this one. That's pretty good. 
34 can be a good signal, I think. I hope. It sounds pretty sweet, as Willie calls it. So let's try and dig it. As usual, Jack came to help. That will keep him busy for all of seven seconds. I think I see something round. Is it a coin? <gasps> this might be my first coin. I shouldn't get too excited just in case it's like a button or a bottle top. I think that might be my first coin, but I also think it's pretty goosed. So I'm not sure I'm going to get any detail off that, but I'll try and clean it up and show you. Okay, on closer inspection, it would appear that this is a button and not a coin. Hi Jack. Yes. That is disgusting. So, yep, yeah, I saw a bit of colour and some, I think, gold gilt. You can just make out the start of a word there. I think I can see an A and an N. So, yep, yeah, not a coin. It's a button. Quite an old button, but never mind. A find is a find, but I'm still to find my coin. Let's keep going. Hey, pups. got a really nice signal here 26 if you look on my display on the on the screen here 25 24 belted up a signal right let's dig it jack's at the ready to drop his ball in the hole jack loves metal detecting because it's a game of ball the whole time if you don't give him the ball he runs off so this is how we keep him by us back a bit buddy back a bit <laughs> ring pull tizer 1983. Got it. Drum roll. It's a something. What is it? It's, it's not a tin. coin. No, not a coin. There's a tin of some description. I think it may have been like a, I don't know, cosmetics pot or something. I think it's aluminium. Anyway, yeah, cool. Let's keep going. There's something in here somewhere. And a ball from Jack. Oh. Ah. Don't know what this is. Just a piece of bar, I think. It's got age. Don't know what it is though. It's all right though. Let's keep looking. And this is where I think it is. Jack, Jack is helping. Jack's digging his own hole. I sort of started digging it up and then got Willie to check it because I don't trust my own abilities yet. I see something. <gasps> what is it? Oh, I think it's uh, some kind of tag or... From a bird. I saw the thin edge and the bent... Yeah. The I bent metal. I thought it was a... No, I thought it was a love token. Oops. Oops. <sighs> Can I have a look? It's from a bird, uh, from a leg of a like goose or something like that. And they're quite a common find, but they give a belt and signal, so they're quite yeah. an exciting thing to find. And then they turn out to be that, and it's like, oh, okay, I'll find someone else Especially now. Especially when the edge looks like a really thin coin. That's true. Hence that's true. an old coin. Ah, well, you keep looking, you'll find them. That's I want to find a coin. That would be nice. Let's do that then. Jack wants to find a ball. Go on then, Jack. Okay, I got a signal in here somewhere. Let's check it with a probe. Oh, okay, that was easy. <laughs> what we got? Oh, nice. It's a little bag seal. It's a little flax seal or bag seal, which would have sealed the bag at one point. A flax or grain or something similar. But that should clean up quite well. It's made of lead. Strings would have gone through the middle and then it would have been clamped down on. And the sort of tongs that they clamped it with would make that pat pattern. They'd have the indentation. So yeah, that's a little bag seal. A nice little find. Let's keep looking. Oh, I think it's a coin. Nope, it's a button. It's a button. This is what I was saying. 
bunch of them in it, I go look, it's, they're gilded on the back and they would have the name of the company, usually based in London oh, I can see the gold there. Yeah, it's gold gilded I mean, it's too far gone, if this was valuable I wouldn't be rubbing it like this, but it's, it's a button, so But there, nothing on the front usually and a bit of gold gilding left on the back that's been protected by the little terminal there Mm. So there you go, it's a button folks! So they didn't just make buttons that were plain on the front and gold on the back? That was no, what was confusing me. No, they were gold all over and it would have had maybe like a, a, like a crown with potentially an anchor if it was the navy on the front and in the back it would have the branding of the company. There's a company mm -hmm. called Orange I think that used to make them, Orange of London. So there you go. That is actually gold gilding, so should I dance? Technically he found gold, you could do a tiny little I don't want to jinx it. No. I'm, not, I'm not dancing for gold leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Got something in this clod here. Oh, I actually see it. <laughs> it's that. I think it's actually just a, it's either a pin or it's a button. I think it may be a button. Yeah, I think that's probably a military button. Probably George in that. Yeah, it is, look. Something on it, some writing. I'm not sure if you can make that out. I'll put that in my little finds box and look at that later once it's cleaned up. I look like such a scruff. <laughs> Comes with the territory, I guess. I'm just having a little break, a little sandwich in the shade with Jack. It's chicken in the sandwich, that's why Jack is here mainly. It does take me a while to get back into detecting because I don't do it that regularly and I'm quite new to it. So I think you have to get your ear in and I think it shows because the first three signals I dug were all iron, which is a bit rubbish. I dug a button and I thought it was a coin and I just dug a phantom signal that it was there and then as soon as I dug it out there was nothing. So hopefully, hopefully I'm getting into it now and I'll have some food and I will get back out in the field and find something cool and interesting. Jack's waiting on a bit of my chicken sandwich. I'm sure of it. Hey Jack, hey puppy dog. What do you like best? Your ball or chicken? Gentle. Yes. What is this? Hmm, it doesn't look gold. It's got something in the middle of it. I'm not sure what that is. I mean, it looks old, but not very, very old. I don't know if it's like a pen knife or something. I think that's probably what it is, a pen knife. And that little bit of detail, it might be bone or something. I just had this, um, and at the time I didn't think much of it. I didn't even film it because it was such a scratchy signal. But now I'm thinking, that it might actually be a little pot leg from a medieval style cauldron from around 1500 or earlier, 1300 to 1500, I think that's what it is. So it would have been a very small cooking pot. That would have been one of the feet, one of three feet on it. See, that's a pretty cool find, isn't it? Bit a medieval cooking pot. I will take it. Well, Jack, I have a pretty good signal that seems to be still down in the hole. So let's have a go. Let's see what I've got. Maybe another button if I'm lucky. John West, there's a tuna packet. Oh well, that's a big chunk of metal to take out the ground and hopefully put in the recycling. You can actually see it. So I don't need to dig that out. I think that's a button. Probably a military button. Ooh, it's been silvered. That's nice. It's not a silver button. Just means that it's been coated in tin or silver to give it a silver appearance. Love it, it's like a little checkerboard. Do you see that? Beautiful little thing. Sometimes you do get solid silver buttons, but you don't find them very often. Yeah, that's nice. The glistening in the sunshine. I think it's this. 
whatever this is. Oh, it looks like a tomback button. And indeed it is. Just a little button, folks, and a ball that belongs to a spider. Stopped right by the car, we're just about to have a break. Aren't we pups? And I did find a signal, so I'm sure I'm going to be adding to my collection of aluminium or aluminum for our American viewers, but let's have a look. Right, get that out of the way. Oh, well, we have something round. I have a feeling that's copper. I don't think it's going to tell us very much. Could this be my first coin? Definitely looks like a copper coin to me. This is what I've found so far. The symbol and then this little flax seal or bag seal, that's quite cool. But this is my favourite find so far today. The little pot leg that I found. And I didn't even film it coming out, which was a bit silly. There's also this little thing as well, it's like a little stud I think maybe? It's like a little star shaped stud. And this is a pull handle from a drawer. So yeah, nothing amazing just yet. But that doesn't mean that we won't find anything amazing, we just have to keep going. This is part of a copper pot that they probably use for cooking. In fact, it may have been the same pot that this leg belonged to, who knows. So yeah, that's, that's what I've found so far. Uh, we're going to have a little break now and then we'll come back to it. So I think it's fair to say that my finds have been mostly trash so far. <laughs> I started out with some iron and then I moved on to some copper and lots of aluminium. Not sponsored by either John West or Iron Brew, but you know, if those companies want to get in touch, you know where to find us. Only three real things. That I actually thought was a golf tee at first, but apparently it's part of a uh, lamp. A little twiddly bit. And that was my button. I want to figure out if, it, if I can read that on the back. And that's my coin. <laughs> it's my first coin. You probably can't make it out in the video, but you can just about see the outline of Victoria, so. That's a Victorian coin. It's not a bad start, but I do want more. Sarah's first coin. Not a button this time. Okay, so it's pretty goosed, but we think that's a Victorian half penny. I think I can just about make out Victoria on that side. Mm -hmm. See her nose. Excellent. Oh, where so. there's coppers, there's silvers, where there's silvers, there's golds. You just gotta keep on looking. It's an upgrade from the aluminium. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think we're going to change field in a little bit and uh, try somewhere else and see what we can find for you out there. Okay, we've moved field because the last field wasn't producing much. So we're going to try this field now. I've got a signal on this clod. Excuse me, Jack. It's good. Okay. Oh, there's something. Yep. I think it was maybe a coin. Thank you, Jack. Yes, it's a copper coin, I believe. And I think that looks very Georgian to me. You can just make out a figure on there. Pretty sure that's a Georgian coin. Um, might get a date off that though. It'll be 17 something or other anyway. But it's copper alloy. It's in poor condition because of that in farm soil gets corroded away so you can just see a face emerging there look at that Georgie boy there he is George the second so mid 1700s ish thereabouts cool that's encouraging so hopefully we'll find a silver one or a gold one and um, you never know let's keep looking Oh my gosh, that is so heavy. That's a huge chunk of lead. Look at that. It's not anything exciting, but wow. It wasn't difficult to find. Maybe a couple of quid's worth of lead. <laughs> we'll take that home and put it in the scrap. Hi, right, Jack Spaniels. Aside from Jack Spaniels, Sarah just dug a hole there and I'm walking the line next to hers. She's over there. 
and Marlene's here. So I've just found something right next to where she was. So she's swinging from side to side there. That was probably the furthest reach of her swing. So she's just missed this. If this turns out to be something good, I'm going to be in all sorts of trouble. Uh, let's dig it out and see. Oh, it's okay, it's not. It's just a piece of scrap metal. <laughs> okay, no worries. I get to go home tonight, it's all good. Hello. You're beautiful, aren't you? Okay, we're in the third field. This time it's pasture. And we're going to try this field because we can never normally get in it. It's always got horses in it. But today, there are no horses. It's a horse-free zone. So? Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Got something to think in this. Yep. What we got here? Ooh, <laughs> it's just a. It looks like a gold ring or something, but it's not. It's not one of those um, tags for a bird's leg. Oh well, four thousand three hundred. If that means anything to anyone, let's keep looking. I thought this was a nail at first, but start peeling back a little bit. Maybe it's not a nail. So, what have we got? Oh, what have I got? A, a whistle? Is it a whistle or is it maybe a cigarette holder? Take a look at it and see what see what it could be. Oh well, it's better than a nail for sure. So it has a little opening there. So yeah, I think that's a whistle. I don't know how old that is. Maybe not very old. Here we go, a little whistle. Let's see if it still works. I think that's a yes. <laughs> Okay, I got something here. Don't know what I did. Ooh, that's interesting. What's that? Check that out for an imprint as well. I don't know if that's uh, shown on camera. Hope it's not just a button. I think it's been silvered. Maybe we can make that out. Jack's come to investigate. Hi, Jack. Let's take it out. I think that is just a button, you know. Silvered button. Definitely not one I've seen before. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm having a hold my phone. I've got something down here, I don't know if you can see, it's green. I'm trying not to damage it to get it out. Not easy. This thing here. Ooh, and that's it. Oh, that's interesting. What's that then? Mm -hmm. Curious item. What that is. It's an unusual shape, it's sort of recessed and it's got sort of white stuff in there. I wonder if that was enameling or something. That's really weird. I don't know what this is. I'll have to clean that up later and have a look at that, but that's, uh, that's certainly a new one on me.
thanks for joining us it was good fun we didn't find too much to be honest but we enjoyed it and it was nice to be out underneath the sunshine until next time it's the history bit I found this silver ring a few years ago now, not far from where we were detecting in this video. I took it into treasure trove at the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. Just recently, I received an email from the museum to say that the ring has been claimed under the Treasure Act. Here's the form that they sent me. I'll let it scroll down slowly so that you can read what it says. If you watch Dirty Secrets of Scotland regularly, then you will know that this is not the first item that I've had confirmed as treasure, and that's not including the pendant items that are with the museum, of which there are now several. This is the very first item that I had confirmed as treasure, a 15th to 16th century gold finger ring, which featured in this magazine article. And here is the finder's certificate which I had framed. Shortly, I'll also receive a certificate for the newly claimed ring too, which I'll feature in a future video. Hello and welcome back to Dirty Secrets of Scotland, second part of this video. Okay, so I've come back here, it's just me today. Sarah and Jack are back at DSOS HQ. Sarah's painting. Jack's probably snuffling around looking for ham and things. Anyway, I'm going to hit these fields hard. This is the first field I'm going to try. It's a stubble field. The next field over has actually just been ploughed and rolled, so it's quite nice. In fact, you know what? I think I'm going to go with the soil field first, and then I'll do the stubble field. Yeah, go over there. Join me over there in a second. Let's see what we can find today. There's something here, it's quite a high signal actually. Oh, that wasn't hard. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's a modern electricity connector to a battery or something like that. Yep, first find anyway. Let's keep going. So oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> It's a whistle. It's another whistle. That's insane. That might be part of a flute. I don't know. But uh, that is so funny. Sarah just found one of these. And now I found one as well. Not the whole thing though. Okay folks, I've just come out of the soil field. It's a carrot field, the soil is really fluffy. I'm finding it really difficult to get down deep enough because the soil is so fluffy. Also, there's very few targets. So it's probably going to be a better bet to go back into the stubble field, which was plan A. Let's see what we can find in amongst the stubble. First signal is a button in the stubble field. It's all right though. Whether there's buttons or coins. There's something in here. Don't know what it is. Let's have a look. Oh, oh, it's gold. Love finding gold. I don't like finding gold bottle tops so much though. So. I'm back at the car and I'm feeling rather sheepish because I just cut my thumb on the drone when I was flying. I tried to land it on my hand, which I can normally do easily, but a gust of wind happened and caught it. And it's no big deal, it's just a little cut, but I've just fixed it. But yeah, they're sharp. These little uh, blades on the ends are sharp. Anyway, that was a little delay, nothing major, but to detect and. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so my thumb got beaten up, but the drone seems to be fine. Okay, I've got someone here. I think I know what this is. This would be a musket ball. I think. Pretty sure that is. A little musket ball. Nice, probably a hunting musket ball rather than one that's been used in a war. Yeah, nice little find that. Just found this. I think that this is a piece of napped flint. You like the ones that we found before? In the highlands. The reason I think that is you can see all the different strike marks. There's a thing they call a percussion mark there where it's been napped off and then I think it's been nipped off right round. Yeah, and on the other side. It doesn't look natural to me. I think this is a scraper. It would have been used for scraping animal hides to get the fur clean. That's amazing, that's an absolute belter. That's not a metal find, but it's an absolute belter. Get my little brush out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that is. I'm pretty sure that's a napped flint. What a belter. Underneath the soil or buried in the ground There's a lot of treasure to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland Through the fields and woodland With trusted spade in hand Bramble, rose and hawthorn are spread across the land But when we feel the nettle sting Ow! Oh, I see it! I think that's a coin! Yes, it is. Very worn. Probably Georgian, that's why. Eaten away by the soil. But yeah, it's a Georgian coin. Oh, and it looks like it might be pierced as well. Yes, it is. Someone's nailed that to a door, perhaps. See, the hole is smaller on this side than the other. Square nail, right through the middle of the coin. Sometimes it was like a political statement if they didn't like that monarch, they nailed it on the door of someone. Um, presumably to say, we don't approve of uh, who you believe in kind of thing, so... Not sure if that's exactly what it was about, but that is a lovely wee find anyway. Nice, let's keep going. What's this thing? Whatever this thing is. It's quite fragile. I think it may be a pin of some type. Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. Sorry about this wind, guys. I don't know if it's a pin or if it's like a watch winder or something. Yeah, the pin seems to be the wrong angle. That's really lovely. Then I'll do it really nice when it's cleaned up. I'm back at the car having a bit of lunch and watching the tractors and the combine harvester over there. Doing a great job cutting that field for me. Anyway, this week's bizarre sandwich is ham, pickled onion, and strawberry jam. The sweet notes of the strawberry jam combined with the saltiness of the ham and the soft, soft bread, like it's just come out of the oven this afternoon, and then the sharpness of the pickled onion. It's absolutely revolting. It's a one out of ten. Oh, we got one. Oh. 
Ah, looks like another coin, folks. Is another coin, it's a half penny this time. And I can't rub it with this thumb because it's got a plaster on it. I think it's probably Victorian. Yes, it is. Victorian half penny from the 1800s, possibly up to 1901, but probably more likely 1800s. I just tipped all this out and I can actually see. Can you see it? Just the edge here. No point or necessary. I think it's another Georgian coin. This is the problem with the copper coins and fields that just get eaten. So they're just blank discs when you find them, it's a shame. If that was gold or silver, it would be beautiful. But unfortunately, it's just a lovely artefact rather than something of, uh, of real beauty, I suppose. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, I'm in the third field of the session. Let's see what we can find in this field. It's been pretty good so far today. I've been enjoying it. So uh, let's see what else I can find. Okay, what we got here? I don't know, I thought it was that. It's probably lead. It is lead. Plastic of the past. <laughs> Aha. Ah, I think I know what this is. This looks like a cup weight. That's a nice find, that. Don't think it's got size on it. I don't think it's a trade weight because trade weights are shallower than this. This is quite deep. Now these weights used to slot into each other and they were illegal. You weren't meant to use them. But well, people did, of course. Because people are people. That's what people do. I'm trying to get the dirt out of here to show you if there's anything inside it, because often there is. This straw isn't really up to this job though. Well, I'll clean it up later and you can see anyway. But that's a lovely little find, that. Little cup weight. Nice. Well, I dug this out and it was giving me a high signal anyway. Now it's giving me an even higher one. 33! 31 to 33. Wow. Let's see what it is. It's probably a beer can. <laughs> I hope not. Plenty of beer cans today already and soft drink cans. Aha! Oh, that's cool. It's in bad condition, but it's a great coin. It's uh, a copper coin. Whoops, it's in worse condition if I drop it like that. I can tell what it is. Not that you can see very much, but that's George III. And you can just about make out some right in there on the edge. This is called the cartwheel penny. They made them in 1797. Some say they made them longer than that. Some say they just made them for that year. Guess you won't know for sure, but that's interesting. It seems like, yeah, it has been pierced. Let's try and turn around and get you out of the wind. That's the second coin that I've found today that's been pierced in different fields as well. A little plastic tool here. They didn't do a very good job of piercing it. Actually, you know what it is? I think they tried to pierce it and they gave up because it's so thick. <laughs> That's cool. That's a nice find, that. I like finding uh, cartwheel pennies. Very nice.
Aha. Uh -huh. Oops, I've dropped it. Oh, that's quite cool. What's that then? Hmm. That looks like a very old style of buckle. Had a signal that was about 4.55 feet in length along here. From the end of that hole, just above the end of that hole, straight down here. And then I dug it out to see what it was, and it just came deeper and deeper and deeper. And there's like a stone slap down there, and a huge signal that goes from there, at the top of the hole, all the way back to about here. Like a stone coffin slab or something, it's crazy. Thanks for joining Sarah, Jack and I on a special edition of Dirty Secrets of Scotland in the fields. And just as I was about to leave the field there, I found that bizarre long slab thing. So I've contacted the landowner and we'll see what he says. I have a feeling it's something to do with farming that I don't know about, but um, I hope there's something old and uh, we will see in time. Until next time. Okay, so I spoke with the landowner and we're going to dig down to find out what this large stone or concrete slab is. He had no knowledge of its existence either. There's little point in involving the museum if what we're looking at is modern, perhaps metal reinforced concrete, who knows. I don't want to waste their time. However, if we discover this is something of historical or archaeological significance, we will down tools and call treasure trove at the National Museum of Scotland and wait for them to send the relevant people to check it out. It's worth mentioning that this field is where I found a suspected Anglo-Saxon traffic light funerary bead, which is usually associated with Saxon burials. The bead is already with the museum for analysis. At the time of making this video, there was nothing else to report. We upload our videos weekly, so that's it for now. Stay tuned to Dirty Secrets of Scotland for further news regarding this potentially very exciting find. Well, these rainy day creations Hi folks, I just wanted to show you how I go about taking photographs of coins. This is a James the First half groat. It's a hammered coin, but you can use any coins for this. This is a smartphone, it's an iPhone in this case. Go over the coin, take a picture directly above, make sure it's in focus, hit photo, turn around, check it's focused, which I think it has, yes. So now, edit, turn it that way, do that once, turns it the right way. Then zoom into the size you want, and that's it for now. Now, go into the actual editing of the picture rather than just the orientation. I always like to hit auto once. Exposure, and this is the really important part. Exposure goes all the way to the top. And then just a little adjustment on brilliance. And that's it. That's how I take my pictures that you see in these videos. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's very detailed. It comes out really well. So I'll put that picture up on the screen now and you can see as well. I hope you found that uh, little demonstration helpful. If you want to help this channel grow and join us on new and exciting adventures every week, we do need your support. Every single contribution makes a difference, is hugely appreciated and ensures the future of this channel. To show your support, please do so in the following ways. You can buy us a coffee over on Kofi. You can buy the treasures that we dig out the Scottish soil and also the items that we craft and create over on Etsy. And to become a patron of Dirty Secrets of Scotland and make a monthly contribution to the amount of your choice, you can do so over on Patreon.com. 
We love making these videos for you guys. Thanks so much to our patrons and everyone that helps in making them a possibility. Finally, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's free and it helps the channel. Here's to the next adventure. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland Zoom in to the size you want Like so Go into this editing feature Hit auto And this is the important part, hit exposure and ramp it all the way up. <laughs> Turn it round. So it's the right way round. And you can see it like this. It's not working. Oh, Jack. Of course you found the water. And not just any water. The muddy water. Are you pleased with yourself? <laughs>